have with us the Harpoon ER, the extended range variant uh, of our Harpoon missile system line. Uh, the missile uh, is going to go you know, twice the range of its current uh, 1C variant, so we're talking uh, 167.5 nautical miles on class uh, range. And you know, 29 countries have the Harpoon weapon system in their inventories. Uh, active sales going on today uh, with the missile system. And within it, uh, countries are able to take advantage of their life cycle support investment that they've done with the missile. It's able to not only that, uh, you have a very good industrial supply base uh, already established. And the missile is uh, for the Navy with our LCS offering that we're getting, uh, responding to the proposal will be its net enabled weapon capability. It's the only cruise missile in the U.S. inventory uh, that has that capability today. Other systems, of course, have uh, that system in development, but Harpoon has completed its, uh, its uh, demonstration test, and now we're moving into OT and expect to enter the fleet in 2017. And so it's also uh, the net enabled weapon capability for the P-8. And so we have a cross-domain weapon capability here that will allow the Navy to take advantage of that infrastructure and investment that they have. In our response to the Navy's uh, frigate OTH RFP that has been released, and we're expecting it right now in draft form, and we're expecting later in January here the actual final. Uh, in our response, what we'll be uh, providing to the Navy is a system that's available, it's affordable, it's extremely capable, extremely lethal. And so what the Navy will be getting is capability at twice the range at half the cost. And with its added net enabled weapon capability, it will dominate the battle space. CRAM is a product that we introduced uh, a little over 10 years ago, but more recently for the U.S. Navy, started to deploy it on the uh, uh, on the littoral combat ships, on the uh, Independence class uh, littoral combat ships, probably about two years ago. Uh, it's now being outfitted on all of the Independence class ships. CRAM is a variation of Phalanx, where we've taken away the uh, the 20 millimeter Gatling gun from Phalanx and replaced it with a launcher that is capable of launching the RAM rolling airframe missile, uh, 11 of them. Uh, it still has the uh, Phalanx 1B2 radar associated with it, the whole fire control system that's associated with it, and is mounted on a ship in exactly the same configuration as a, uh, as a Phalanx, mounts in the same spot. Uh, the C-RAM compared to the Phalanx allows the, uh, the ship to have uh, extended range against uh, targets that are a little farther out, uh, the, the, uh, the missile is capable of autonomously tracking and, and uh, attacking those targets so you can engage multiple targets. Extended capability against threats and also the ability to deal with, with multiple threats. As you probably know, the, the Navy Nav Europe uh, cut out a uh, urgent operational needs statement back in, I believe, February of 2015. And uh, that was uh, set up to put CRAM on the four forward deployed DDGs uh, that are stationed out of Rota, Spain. It brings a little additional range. Uh, it also brings the RAM Block 2 uh, missile uh, into the equation uh, and, uh, you know, sort of a, a fire and forget kind of system. And, and we're definitely in discussions, you know, with the Navy and uh, on how to utilize CRAM to support uh, the distributed lethality concept. I, I want to say it might be the next CRAM off the line that's going to the, the LCS-17. Uh, and so LCS-17 and up, all the odd-numbered platforms uh, will receive CRAM in the same location that the Mark 49 RAM launcher was. In May of 2015, uh, the United States Navy went initially operational capable with the Block II missile. The Block II missile is our latest variant of the RAM family of missiles. Um, what Block II brings to us is an enhanced kinematic capability. Um, we're able to complete the in-game engagement with RAM at a much higher rate 
and a much quicker rate. Um, the maneuverability of today's emerging threats drove us to improve those kinematics so we could engage quickly and terminate those targets and threats. Lockheed Martin is showcasing the multi-mission surface combatant. It is an export variant of the littoral combat ship. It roughly displaces the same as the U.S. Navy littoral combat ship Freedom Type, which means over 3,000 tons. The model here is fitted with a 76 mm Automedora main gun, Saab 0200 fire control radar, two of them, one forward, one aft eight Harpoon anti-ship missiles in 2x4 configuration, 16 Mark 41 vertical launch systems for ESSM surface-to-air missiles, two triple torpedo launchers for anti-submarine warfare. There's also a CRAM launcher mounted on top of the helicopter hangar. The model is showcasing an MH-60 Romeo helicopter as well as a multi-mission bay with two RHIBs inside. The radar fitted on the model is the TRS-4D by Airbus Defense and Space. We're here at uh, Surface Navy Association here in Washington to uh, one of our featuring products and technologies is a uh, very innovative new towed sonar handling system and, and sonar system. And the system is called TRAPS. Stands for Towed Reelable Active Passive Sonar. Lightweight, modular, containerized, affordable. The key thing about the system that it's, it's really a breakthrough in a, in, from an innovation point of view is the, the ability to have an active source towed on the cable here and then a passive receive array stream behind it and the entire system being able to be reeled onto the drum without the need for a heavy handling gear to, to, to grab the VDS, the variable depth sonar body. So it's a simple handling, minimized crew. We're a lot of inquiries from all over the world since we first started to get the word out on it. Uh, it's a lot of interest. Um, and particularly late from the unmanned USV, unmanned surface vehicles, uh, it's quite a bit of interest, right? This is a one-quarter scale model of the Atlas Electronic CCAT Autonomous Undersea Vehicle, AUV. And uh, we are launching this product in the U.S. market. The U.S. market is the largest market for unmanned undersea vehicles. Our vehicle is a medium-sized vehicle. The real vehicle would be three to three and a half meters in length, depending on the variant. Uh, the vehicle has side scan sonars which are modeled here and at the head of the vehicle it has what's called swap head technology so we can remove the head to put in different sensors depending on the mission required for the vehicle and this can be done very quickly in the field so we can get the operators can get back on mission and this keeps uh, the vehicle working and keeps a uh, customer from having to buy two or three vehicles because they are very expensive. Another interesting thing the CCAT has is besides being an autonomous undersea vehicle, it can also be controlled by an umbilical cable and be used as a remote operated vehicle for fine control in confined spaces, for example, inspecting the infrastructure of an offshore derrick or piers, things like this. Uh, so uh, we, are, we are ready to take orders and, and uh, market this product in the United States and also in Europe. Our company, Atlas North America, makes uh, small sonars that go inside UUVs, side scan sonars like this. This, this is an example of a module, the, the brains of the sonar, if you will, for a single frequency side scan sonar. If one added cables and then the transducers, which actually make and listen for the sound, uh, that would be a complete system. 
And this system is not only very small and compact and light, it can be used in medium-sized UUVs or even very small UUVs uh, to, uh, to, uh, to give this kind of capability to customers who previously could not afford medium to large-sized uh, undersea vehicles.